The Nigerian presidential election in 2023 is one of the most awaited on the continent. It's uh, arguably the biggest election in the history of Africa's biggest country, as it has many factors and unique realities. Nigeria's politics and leadership is vital to the growth of the African continent, and this has piqued the interest of many Africans in Nigeria's election. Now, the political fighters or gladiators, as you'd want to call some of them, are on the ballot, and Nigeria's biggest parties are also in Iran in. The peculiarity of this election is also the strength carried by the third force, so one of whom is media entrepreneur and politician who may be Kachuku. On VSA, we will be looking at the presidential candidates of the African Democratic Congress, the ADC, Dumebi Kachuku, and All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and what their candidates, candidacies mean to Nigerians. Welcome to The Square, I'm Sulaiman. Dumebi Kachuku is the chairman of Roots Television and presidential candidate of the ADC. He defeated former CBN Deputy Governor Kinsley Mogalu to emerge as the candidate of the African Democratic Congress. Kachuku's emergence wasn't without its controversies as Mogalu claimed irregularities in his emergence. Well, that has been since uh, has since been put uh, behind. The focus now is on the presidential race in 2023. Kachuku is vying against powerful presidential candidates, but he believes in the structure of the people. Politics, however, are never short of surprises. Well, the candidates for the 2023 elections are Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the APC, Atiku Abu Bakr of the PDP, Peter Obi of the Labour Party, and Rabiu Musa Konkunsu of the New Niger People's Party. Uh, joining me now live here is Adini Kunu, his spokesperson, Dumebi Kachuku campaign organization for the 2023 elections. Good to see you, Kunu, and uh, thanks for your time. Quickly, let's start by asking if the ADC has settled uh, its uh, in house issues uh, as it prepares for this election. Um, in the first place, I bring you the regards of my boss, His Excellency Dumebi Kachuku. And um, having said that, I need to say very clearly to the world watching us that the ADC is clean and uh, has, as a party, a very fantastic political health without rancor, uh, without problems, without any litigations. So my boss doesn't have any baggage. He's clean and good to go as far as the 2023 presidential elections uh, is a case concerned. So I need to say that clearly here. You know, for some politicians, I'm talking about politicians, not Nigerians, uh, okay. the, the, the name Kachuku Dumebi is new to them. Some are asking, you know, people talk about antecedents when yeah. it comes to politics uh, in the country. So w what would you say to them about uh, the man, uh, Kachuku? Well, I think that it's important to reintroduce the personality of my boss. Uh, I need to say very clearly, uh, he was born in Kanu and of course raised in the South, having been born there. So he traverses the north and south of the country, uh, particularly considering the fact that he's from Delta State on the Chubu in Delta North. And we know that after Lagos and Kano, of the first four that have the highest number of voters, the South-South can hold its own as we speak. So I think that is good to clarify that. But for many people who do not understand, he has been within the political sphere for quite a number of years, particularly uh, one that has held its own in the Fourth Republic, which is 22 years unarguably. So for many who do not know, Nigeria is a, a big country, you should say that, uh, the most populous black nation, approximately 220 million people would actually uh, make us ask questions about his personality, but he has done quite a lot for himself, and as you rightly put, a businessman, the chairman of Roots TV, is also uh, a very thoroughbred estate uh, uh, estate person in terms of property holding, and that's a factor of the matter, but that's on the business side. With regard to politics, is somebody who has been within the rank and file of those who are the movers and shakers of this country, uh, one who doesn't like too much noise around himself when he does the same. But my, my boss is as smart as you can imagine as far as the politicking of this country is concerned.
And you know, uh, a lot of politicians are saying for, for a man um, who's, who seemed to be coming, making an incursion for the first time into yeah. uh, Nigeria's uh, murky waters of politics, uh, talking about uh, being a candidate, yes. he should also be talking about alliances. We've been looking at alliances. We've seen meetings by uh, politicians in Nigeria within the continent and outside the continent uh, in faraway Europe. And rather than Vi alone shouldn't uh, maybe Kachuku, uh, you know, make uh, some form of uh, overtures to some other political parties and work uh, in that light? In the first place, let's make it very clear that for the past 17, 18 years, the ADC has participated in four consecutive elections since 2007. In 2007, the ADC came fourth in the elections. Uh, in the 2011 election, the ADC came eighth. In the 2011 elections, uh, but, but the 2015 elections, the ADC came eight, seventh. And in the 2019 election, the ADC came fourth. So I think in the first place that we should understand the antecedents of the ADC as a party, which is very fundamental to this discussion. So as a party that has foothold on arguably in 32 states of 36 states of the Federation, and unarguably in the federal capital territory, you should know that to a great extent the party has held its own. So any argument or conversations around overture should be people coming to us as a party. It is no mean feat to come forth in an election. And do not also forget that the ADC as a party has produced people who occupy legislative offices at the federal level. Do not also forget that in 2019 over 100 parties were delisted. The ADC has remained a party that has not changed nomenclature. Like some parties have changed nomenclatures, have of course changed people from point A to point B. So if you're talking about understanding contemporary politics and standing for untainted ideology, the ADC has been able to hold its own. So we're not talking about a savior, the glorification of an individual, and we don't hear anything about other persons in the party. We are talking here about a party, especially a man that understands the need for a party to stand on its own merit and be able to hold its own. So I'd expect others to make overtures, for them to want to be with us, for them to want to actually key into the ADC Dumebe Kachuku ideology, to understand what the Patriot Act of the ADC stands for, to understand the argument of my boss and the need to go into this election, to know that this country has the youth demography as superior, my boss actually occupies that position. So these are fundamentals in this discussion. So the ADC, therefore, has its weight, has its ideology, has its credit, is solid enough, has structure that some people have derided, and of course has foot soldiers to carry on anything that we want to do as far as this election. Do not forget, for consecutive participation in the presidential election is some experience for us as a party. And when you talk about structures, yes, uh, you, you know, uh, you're also a professional journalist, and uh, you know, and for some journalists, uh, they've been able to define what structure means yes, in Nigeria's political <laughs> lexicon. Yes, so, what structure do you talk about? Structure uh, means those first that believe in your cause, because elections are not won within the virtual spaces. If you check developed democracies, especially the US elections, ultimately, <clears throat> not the early voters who voted online, but of course those who came out when the election date was what it was, and they participated. So when we talk about what structure means for us, the structure of a party means the people who have stayed with us for the past 17, 18 years as a party. Those that have actually participated in the election process of the country under the banner and the candidacy, of course, the symbol of the ADC. It means those who believe that as a party, we are different from the baggages that are associated with other parties. And of course, they are leading candidates. And in this case, His Excellency Dumebe Kachuko. It therefore means that to all structure, means the people that believe that the ADC is untainted across the nooks and crannies of this country, that while others are having baggages regarding their ages, regarding their health, regarding their understanding of the issues, regarding how to turn the economy healthier and better, regarding how to secure the country. The ADC has done a very robust diagnosis of this problem and is ready to prefer solution. So we are not confused about the task that we seek to take on. 
We are not ready to do the blame game, as some parties have consistently done, especially in their first time going to the second. So we are a party, the healthiest, the most ready, and we understand the dynamics, of course, going into this election. So we are good to go. And what stands Dumebi Kachuku out, uh, you know, for Nigeria's presidency? In the first place, um, I need us to understand that the old order have benefited immensely from the juice of this nation. And the old order do not seem to understand the contemporary solutions to the challenges of the now. The old order seem to have that hegemony mentality of not adopting certain things that are progressive with regard to helping the country solve our problems. The old order have also not shown exemplary leadership where you speak from your mouth, you speak from 10 sides of your mouth, or you do not walk the talk. So in the first instance, when we talk about the higher percentile of this population, those that are representing the country on the global map with their ideas, with their relentless positivity, with their belief in the Nigerian nation. My boss, His Excellency Dumebe Kachuku, cuts that particular tape superbly. He ticks the boxes in green. As a man who is young, as a man who has worked for the better part of his life, as a and, young man. And, yes, and you think, and, and you, do you think Nigerians are looking at the, uh, the age thing? Uh, oh, is oh, that an issue? Most definitely. In, in this, in, in this most election. Def okay, okay let, let me just say this. If you look at the boss created, quite frankly, and that have resonated amongst the larger percentile of the population, it has to do with the demography of my boss. It therefore means that the appeal as a young man goes a trillion times over for him, which is the first. If you're talking about the problems associated with new, what the real age of this person is, uh, something associated with the health status of people that want to take political offices, such baggages are not with His Excellency to be Kachuko. That is one part. Somebody who left the great Uniben, his educational records are not flinching. It is very smooth and clear. You could go, of course, to the registrar's office, and at the punch of a button, you see that he graduated from there. And somebody whose businesses have not been associated with something, he has worked all his life, legally, legitimately, to make his money within the Nigerian system. He pays his taxes. So when you look at the things that other candidates of parties have that are in public spaces, and they, they cannot defend rather than make excuses, his Excellency do maybe Kachuku doesn't have that. And I think that these are the things that people want. Then with regard to competence, there's something that I want to... Let, let me say this for the record. Mm. There's something my boss has already prepared, having done a proper diagnosis of the problems of the country, and he intends to send that bill first on assumption of office, May 29, 2023. It's called the Patriot Act. If we talk about, you know, the patronage of indigenous businesses, I think successive leaders of this country have paid lip service to that. Why do we have in a country a health sector that is not attractive enough for the leadership of the country? You cannot preach what you do not practice. When the president came into this, came to the saddle, there were lots of promises made. And you know, no man gets told the truth than his wife. The current president's wife said there was no cotton wool at the Aso Villa Clinic, headed by Dr. Jalal Arabi, that having not provided even cotton wool at the Aso Villa, he got the permanent secretary position at the newly created Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. So they are rewarding for incompetence, newer offices to people that are not responsible to be. The records are there, so I brought that out. So one of the things that the Patriot Act seeks to address is first, every health infrastructure in this country must be patronized by the leadership of this country willy-nilly. Then we're talking about the abuse of security uh, officers that are provided for private citizens. Of course, we know that the president, the vice president, the governors, the deputy governors, ideally should have personal protection from our security operators. Then what about the individual businessmen? Why are we taking from our security operatives to actually guarantee protection for private individuals it is simply because certain things are not proper there. So across those lines, that is also one of the things that the preacher tries seeks to address. So when we look at these provisions, all that, we're not thinking of setting up a cabinet six months after we get into office. The paperwork are done and dusted and we're ready. 
When you talk about six months, uh, after getting into office, uh, how sure, how optimistic are you? Uh, you know, they say politicians are incredible optimists. No, no, you, 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 you sure victory? Most definitely. All of the things I've mentioned are the things that the majority of the percentile of this country are looking for. So what are the people, I know the campaigns will start, uh, you know, at the tail end of September. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, what are the conversations uh, you're, you're having uh, with the electorate? Yes, And uh, now you're having some form of engagement going around. Yes, of course. Uh, not too long, we saw you and uh, Kachuku do maybe in Abuja and some other places. At the NBA conference. So, so yes, w w when you go around Nigeria, yes, please. what are... The conversations you in, have in, in the first place let's let's tell everybody who cares to listen when people have been with certain political parties or individuals over time and you don't produce results i think it is only sensible for you to allow somebody who is neither tainted nor bogged down by the luggage of disaffection to take the saddle on our merits and has a an individual that has been able to maintain consistently that clean bill of health, that is what His Excellency Dumebe Kachuku has been able to do. And that is the gospel we preach. We tell people everywhere we go, look at what we have on ground. These things that we have on ground are there for the world to see. We are ready to lead. I talked about the Patriots Act. Nigerians die daily. Let's talk about the education sector. In the last calendar year, about 1.6 trillion was actually spent by Nigerians on foreign education. Honorable Sergio Sogun of another party has in the 8th and the 9th Assembly sponsored a bill that every political office holder should have their children school in the country. It didn't say necessarily you have to go to public uh, tertiary institutions. Lawmakers have shut that down. If everybody's children school here, there will not be a vantage position given to anybody. You'd have no option than to fix the education sector. And for the first time, let's say it here, mm. in the history of ASU, we've never seen such level of revelation regarding the in irresponsibility of political leadership in this country. You sign a contract. Do not forget that when we talk about ASU, we've had successive strike actions by the medical sector of this country. So, so going into yes, this please. election, going into this election, yes, do you please. think people will be looking at candidates or the political parties? Because, it, 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 because, because you're talking about uh, what's uh, going on now, things that are going on now. Keep in mind, President Buhari will, uh, is not on the ballot. Uh, so, uh, this is it. More or less like saying that you have to take away the name of a family from the individual. It's always difficult to do that. The great names and the great minds of this world and those that have taken over from them have been able to maintain that dignity. Let me use somebody within Nigeria's uh, electoral system. Uh, Barrister Mike Igini is somebody reputed to value his family name. And at a recent accusation that he has actually, you know, ensured there's a litigation to that effect, he said he's not the only one who bears the name. There's a family name that he has to protect. There are lots of people across the world. So he understands as an individual and the name of the family. Now, let me go to the party level. The APC and the PDP are not only names that have disappointed the Nigerian people. They also have individuals who do not stand for certain ideology. So now you're a well-traveled person. Let me go to the US that you are conversant with as well as Europe. There are people that have been Republicans for 210 years. People have been Democrats for, 300, for, for upwards of 100 years. Now you're talking about families. I'm talking about families. And do you know what? The Bush family, for instance, for the majority of their existence, have not been Democrats. They have been Republicans. Even when they disagree with certain ideas coming from party members, they remain there to correct what they do not appreciate. The Clinton family have remained as such. I'm saying that people do not even understand that when you belong in a party, you belong in a party because you believe that the solutions are able to move the country forward. Let's look at the Conservatives in the UK and the Labour Party. The affiliation of their respective members over the years is in the undying belief in the ideology of where they belong. And even if they feel that their own party has not or have not offered the people what it should offer, they rethink solutions within the party they belong. That is honor. But when you move from a party to the other, we have three persons that appear or four persons that appear to be 
all are about. These four leading candidates have jumped these two parties over the years. They have moved from one party to the other. What is then the ideology of the party that gave birth to them solving the Nigerian problem? You, you, you think all of them? Oh, most definitely. Has, Mo has, has Bola Chinebu moved? Well, Bola, of, of course. I, I, that, I, I would really describe that. That was a metamorphosis. Well, well, you could say that, but the reality is joining an alliance with somebody that has been with APP, CN, uh, CMPP and all that, and you came from AD to AC to ACN and APC, means that there must be something wrong in what you have created. Anyway, I, I think... Uh, let, let, let me quickly... No, 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 quickly, yeah, okay, the good okay, thing is that okay, will, will, will come and tell us more about that That's movement, fine, that's uh, fine. That yeah. amounts to jumping ship or that uh, well, I don't know what definition we have to give to it. Yeah. But again, uh, uh, you know, people, because uh, we're going to give voice and give the platform to every political party, and yes, that please. is why uh, we're excited that you found time uh, to come Thank on, you on, on the show. Yeah. Uh, because people really want to know things about the man, the Dumbi Kachifu, yes, and please. the party. Mm -hmm. Now, tell us, you, you, you spoke about uh, ideology. Yes, please. What's the ideology? The ideology the, first. The ADC? In the first, the ideology, the ideology first is that Nigerians should love Nigeria enough, enough to make it function. And that if you have the privilege of leadership, you should show by example, by commitment, by the solution you bring to the table, how Nigeria's problem should be, should be resolved. And that is what His Excellency Dumebe Kachuku has above others. He believes that the person who leads must be the one who pays the ultimate sacrifice to get the country to function. The other parts of the world that we love to go spend some time were built from the scratch, brought to that level, and they have maintained over the years the attraction that this party holds. And His Excellency Dumebi Kachuku also believes that regardless of the privilege you have to travel around the world, your home will always be your home. My name is Adeni Ikuno. My ancestry will always be connected to this country, regardless of where maybe I decide to make a home tomorrow. It so, is so, that. So, so, yes, so, because uh, we're almost out of time, yes, how please. well have you gone into the streets? Uh, what's the vibe you get when you speak to them about Dumebi Kachuku? One thing that people are happy about is that there is a young man who doesn't care that he has not held maybe a governorship position before but I believe that he could prefer solutions to the Nigerian people. That's the vibe we get. I went in Kaduna a couple of weeks ago, and we spoke at the Arewa House. The Arewa House is the political capital of northern Nigeria. We spoke there. It's everywhere in the media. We have also gone around. I'm here in Lagos. And of course, other platforms have availed me the opportunity to continue the evangelization. I cut the cloth of a young man who believe in the Nigerian project. And over the years, Sulaiman, you are somebody who researches the gradient, have maintained a consistency of belief in the Nigerian project. That is what Nigerians want. Even at this period in our history, where hopes have become shattered, we represent the future. And that is what His Excellency Dumebe Kachuku represents. The hope this country needs, the future that can be mended, and the reality of the fact that this is a marathon that we can win remaining steadfast in our course. And that is what the Sessalese do maybe Kachuko continues to, and so, to actually so, give to so the so world. So far, so far, speaking, uh, you know, uh, for uh, uh, your candidate, yes, Dumebi Kachuko, uh, how would you rate the electoral umpire? Uh, are you excited about uh, the preparations by INEC? Well, I think that uh, the Beavers uh, gives us a great level of assurance. Um, the fact that um, INEC has evolved as the umpire over the years to demonstrate his capacity to be a free and fair umpire is something that we are very positive about. And if you check the uh, staggered elections we've had, the AKT elections, the Oshun State elections, and if you check, we had the AKT elections first, mm -hmm. and there were incidences to a great extent of vote by. By the time we moved to Oshun State a month later, we saw that there was a reduced incidence of vote buying. And of course, INEC got better thumbs up in that election because it was able to block the holes that we found in Ekiti. Many people have argued, for instance, that when we have the elections across the country, manpower, logistics could be the challenge. But I think that we should rest our concerns over that. INEC has demonstrated its readiness and its belief in a system that can function for everybody. And I can tell you this time 
that it will be difficult for bad eggs, even in iron egg, to manipulate anything. So I think very well that we have to uh, give a little thumbs up to Professor Mahmoud Yakub that has demonstrated that he wants a very free and fair elections. And we believe that there is no perfect system across the world. It evolves and becomes better. Even the great nations of the world that are attractive still have certain things that we do not appreciate. But we know that as we prepare for that election, few months, talking about maybe six, seven months from this time, INEC would also have room. For instance, INEC has on its employee people that watch television stations. They have people assigned to watch this program, for instance, that take notes on what we believe they should do. So for INEC, it is to ensure that every system that will be deployed to the various polling units across the country are free from any kind of technical problems and to ensure that all kinds of recurrent logistical problems are addressed ahead of time, ensure that ad hoc staff are trained properly, and also do some investigations to ensure that they don't have bad eggs on their team who could make a mess of what they have planned so far for Solai. It's Keith. Adeni Kuno, thanks for speaking with us here. I must say thank I appreciate this privilege. Thank you very much.